Oh my goodness, Barry, I might have calculated wrong. <laughs> oh. And action. Welcome back to Show and Tell. I'm Billy. Today I am going to show you some acquisitions and my latest project that I'm working on. Well, for starters, I had an idea of a sweater that I wanted to knit. I saw a photograph of a vintage children's sweater. I think I may have shown you a picture of it. I'll, I'll put a picture here. with a matching hat, and I thought, gee, I really love that pattern. The motif of it, it's color work, it's stranded, two colors, and it had a matching hat with a big pom-pom on the top. Not the type of hat that I normally knit, but I really love the pattern. So I decided that because I've been knitting a while and I haven't been a spendthrift. I've been fairly conservative in my yarn acquisition. I decided that it was time for me to splurge. And I went ahead and I ordered cashmere yarn. I have purchased yarn from Color Mart in the past. They are mill ends, so they're sold at a, a pretty substantial discount. Um, but again, I was a little conservative. I ordered one cone of the blue and one cone of this ivory color. Now, let me just show you. Um, it's three over 28 NM. That is the industrial nomenclature. I knew it was going to be pretty thin. They described it as heavy lace weight. I had used their lace weight before and I thought, well, heavy lace weight, it sounds like it would be a little thinner than fingering. And I thought that's right up my alley, especially with the stranding, it's gonna have a double thickness. Well, it came in thinner than I expected. This is the thickness of it. But I'm not one to shy away from knitting on fine needles. Remember my genie was knit on size one. So I pulled out my size one needles and I swatched. I don't even have the swatch to show you anymore because it was so unappealing to me that I ripped out the swatch and I said, never mind, I'm going to double this and try and swatch with that and see if I like the fabric that that gives me. So what I did was I wound some of the yarn off onto bobbins and I held two strands at a time working off of the bobbins. And of course I did the same thing with the other color. At first I swatched with a size two needle. So at the bottom I did some garter stitch to keep it from rolling. I swatched with a size two needle. That was the pattern. That's the motif that I was trying to replicate. And then I wasn't sure if this was going to be big enough to cover the whole sweater. So I thought, just in case, I created another chart using a larger motif that I thought packed a little more punch. And I also knit this on a size two needle. Then, just for the fun of it, I went to a size three needle and I knit this same motif on a bigger needle. What I found was in this fabric knit on the size two, it didn't have very much give. And I was afraid, if you remember the sweater for the rink or the links. That was also color work done stranded initially that I couldn't get the sweater on because it just didn't have the give. But I found with a size three needle that I did have more give. So I thought, there's nothing wrong with how this fabric looked and it has that little extra give. So I thought, you know, I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna go onto a bigger needle than I normally would use and knit that motif. 
So this was my swatch, but I still was a little concerned. So I went on Facebook to one of the stranded knitting uh, special interest pages and I put a picture of my swatch and I was asking for feedback of which one of these motifs people preferred, the bottom, the middle, or the top. And what I actually got was this may not be the right yarn for you to do this type of project because on the back you have all of these strands you're wasting all of that cashmere so the people the people really frightened me and I thought you know maybe I should rethink this maybe it's true cashmere is going to be warm enough with just a single layer now to have all those strands in the back it is a waste of yarn I mean I sort of have my heart set on making this sweater in those colors so uh, you know, I was a little bit reluctant, but I thought, well, you know, before I get too deep into the knitting, let me knit up a swatch in just a single color without stranding and see what I think, because I do have some other patterns in my queue. So I knit this up and I was thinking of doing a sweater that has, um, like horizontal banding and I thought well I'm not going to have enough to do it all blue I'd have to use some of the white so I swatched with the white inside of the band in two different ways that's one way and here's the other way because I thought you know I'm going to need to supplement the blue with the white and then I realized no I really want to do that particular sweater which has like a nautical feel to it in linen as a summer sweater, maybe cotton, but probably linen. I love the color and it would be great, but I really didn't want to do that sweater in wool. So I thought, you know what? Uh, before I decided to ditch the idea, I started ribbing. I had actually made the ribbing for the sweater and then it hit me no, that's just not the sweater that I want to do in cashmere. Then I got concerned about how much yarn I had and was it going to be enough. So, so I, at this point I had multiple concerns. The first thing I did was I figured out the size of this and how many squares like this I would need to work up the whole sweater. And I think I came up with over 30 squares like this because the sleeves take a lot of yarn. And then I have a very compact, very inexpensive scale. You'll find a link below in the show notes where you can purchase a scale like this. This scale has grams as well as ounces. So I put this little swatch on the scale. I found out that this weighed six grams. Well, I know that my cones are 150 grams each. So together I had 300 grams. Well, if I needed 30 of these and each one was six, that was gonna be a hundred and 80 grams? What am I thinking? Did I have a mistake in my thinking? Six. Maybe I needed more like 40? Ooh, now I'm not sure. Four of these, four, that was gonna be 16. No, it was more than 30. I figured like 16 or 20 for the front, 20 for the back, 40, and then the sleeves. Maybe I was gonna need like 60 of these squares. And at six grams each, that would be well over the 300 grams. I was afraid to take a chance. So I went ahead and I ordered more yarn. 
but since I wasn't enjoying having to wind off all these bobbins bit by bit to get my two strands, I asked Color Mart, and at no charge they do this for you, they wound it onto new cones for me with two strands already there. So when I pull from this cone, I'm getting the two strands already. I ordered another cone of blue, another cone of white, so I now feel very confident that I have plenty of yarn. I also want to make the matching hat, and then there's this pom-pom that's going to be a real yarn hog. So, the second batch of yarn just arrived today. I didn't want to do an unpackaging with you because I wanted to jump right in to my knitting. I really want the motif that I want. I'm going to buck all the naysayers and carry on so I can have the look that I want. And here is my slow reveal. I mean, come on. What do you think? I'm completely thrilled with it, and I'm glad that I ignored all the experts. Yes, there's all this stranding on the back, but it does have some stretch to it, and I allowed some additional ease more than I normally would so that I should have enough room to get in because I definitely did not want to repeat the mistake of for the link or the rinks. Um, a couple things that I will say about this since I'm kind of, I am designing my own pattern. First thing is there's not going to be ribbing at the bottom and I prefer to have a little bit of a hem to give the lower edge some body. Um, I haven't stitched all of this in, but I did start with a small bit of solid yarn in stockinette, and then I did a row of garter just to make a line of demarcation. And then when I fold it back, I get that nice crisp A, you know, nice crisp edge. And here's what it looks like. I've temporarily stitched it in place. I've kind of like basted it in place. Um, I do think when I do the other panel, I might make the hem the full length of this first repeat. And I'll make this the back of the sweater where you won't really see it. It's not quite as smooth as I think it could be. I'm basically shooting for a more or less straight up sweater with a drop shoulder. I wanted to have a sort of, you know, casual ski sweater look. The pattern is all over. The sleeves will be this pattern as well. In the beginning, I thought, well, maybe I could conserve a little yarn by doing some decreases from the hip in towards the waist. So I did a little bit. Now I'm at the point where I'm increasing back out for the bust area. But other than that, it's smooth sailing. Um, in the beginning, I was referring to the chart that I created regularly, because you can see that this row and this row are the same, but they're skewed. So you have to kind of remember that you want to shift it over one. And in the beginning, I referred to the chart, but now I can just look at my knitting. I, I'm more comfortable now just referring to my knitting and knowing if I'm on this row that just above it is going to be this repeat, not a repeat of this, because everything gets shifted over. 
I have been knitting on this monogamously and some of my friends have encouraged me to stay with this, not to put it aside, try and go through to completion before I go back to some of the other things that I've been working on. I'm going to try to do that. You can hold me accountable. Comment below if you think that's an important strategy. Um, it has been in the 80s and even low 90s here in New York, but we have air conditioning and I'm reasonably happy knitting with wool even though it is very hot and very sticky in New York. Other acquisitions, yeah. While I was reordering from Color Mart, I went ahead and I requested some samples of yarns, which they are very happy to do. They send you little, you know, small quantity. They tape it to a piece of paper that has the information on it. So if you ever wanted to order these, you know that this is 8 over 36 nm fingering weight cashmere. I wanted to see a thicker strand of cashmere because this cashmere is not really like cashmere that I have felt in yarn shops. When I washed my swatch, it did soften. Not that it's not soft to begin with, but I think because it's only two strands and it's not maybe spun to be um, like a commercially made yarn that's all assembled for you, it seems to have a slightly different feel. I don't know that I would use it again, but I definitely wanted something thin. I mean, I'm tired of making sweaters that end up being bulkier than what I prefer. And of course, with the stranding, it is ending up being a little thicker, but it's still not very thick. I mean, you can probably see that from how it's moving. Anyway, I did order a sample of a fingering weight, and this is a fine fingering weight, 4 over 20 nm. And this is another five fingering weight, oh, sorry, this is another fin fine, this is another fine fingering weight. This one is 5 over 28. This one is a little softer the way it's put together. I don't know if it's how the yarns are twisted up and how many strands are in there. I don't know exactly what causes it to be softer, but this feels much softer than these two. When it's washed, I have no idea. And I also ask them for fingering weight linen. Um, this is linen and rami. It looks so very, very fine. It seems to be four strands. They call that 8 over 36 fingering weight. This is also 8 over 36, and you can see how much, I think you can see, how much thinner this looks than the top one. So I don't know what's up with that. Maybe at some point I'll swatch with these and show you. But it's really um, terrific that they offer this because before you invest hundreds of dollars in yarn, you might want to swatch with it and, and feel it. Okay, other acquisition was at my local knitting guild. We had a speaker from Blue Sky Fibers come and speak to us and they brought a skein of their organic cotton for everyone at the meeting. This is the yarn that I used in my ranunculus, so I was already familiar with this yarn. have no idea what I'm going to do with one skein of it, but it's worsted weight. I feel it's a little chunkier than worsted, but um, I'll leave a link to my Ravelry page for my ranunculus and you can see the needle that I use and you'll be able to see how 
chunky the sweater actually looks. I know most people knit ranunculus in fingering weight, but I had a specific look in mind that I was going for. And the weight of this yarn and the cotton really appealed to me for a summer sweater. Well, since this is a pretty short episode, I think I'll just tack on here. I know a lot of people like to hear about what other knitters are reading. Um, I just recently listened to an audio book that I can highly recommend. I would have to say it's one of the best books that I've ever read. Is read the right word when you're listening and not reading? I don't know. But the best book I listened to, you know, I love the Tom Hanks book, but this book was historical fiction and revolves around an actual woman who lived in New York City and worked for J.P. Morgan, the famous banker, helping him assemble in Canabula rare manuscripts and books for his famous library. He had the goal of building a library that would be unparalleled and this young, attractive African-American woman who was very, very pale-skinned and passed for white, she was able to keep a secret from him and from all of the auctioneers and dealers and people who she negotiated with to buy things for Morgan's library. The story is just riveting because it's historical fiction. It's based on an actual person. And there were two authors, an African-American woman and a Caucasian woman who really collaborated on what all the issues are in having tried to pass as white when you weren't. Um, there's some delving into the Civil Rights Act, um, emancipation, you know, from the Civil War through to like the 1920s. That's kind of the time span of interest in this book. Um, I don't want to say too much because I don't want to spoil it for you, but this whole idea of collecting, I'm very interested in art. I'm not an art collector, but I do enjoy going to museums, as you know if you've seen other episodes of my podcast. I have been to the Morgan Library, in fact, and am particularly fond of the architecture because McKim Mead and White are some of my favorites, and that's a whole other story which is fascinating. They designed the campus of the university that I attended, so they have a special place in my, in my heart. Anyway, I'm digressing. The book I highly recommend, it's called The Personal Librarian. And the names of the authors are long, but I'll put them on the screen and I'll leave a link below where you can find the book. So if you like to listen to audiobooks while you're knitting, this is one that I can say is fantastic. That's it for this week. I'll see you in another week or so. Um, I don't want to come back to you until I have really something, you know, more to show. So stay tuned. Ciao for now.